Hi everyone, I hope today finds you well. So you guys are going to want to click on any of these internet browsing icons here to access the internet. Once you have opened the internet browser, you are going to type in digitallearn.org in the search bar followed by the enter key on the keyboard. Once you are on the website's homepage, we'll have the option to learn in Spanish or in English. So last week we learned how to navigate a website. This week, I will walk you through a module covering a few computer basics. After this module, you will know the components of a computer and keyboard, how to use a mouse, and the functions of the ports on a computer. You will want to go ahead and use the left button on your mouse to click on Getting Started on a Computer Module. The duration of this lesson will be 15 minutes and will consist of four activities. Between each activity, you will click continue to move on to the next activity. With that being said, we are going to click start to get started with activity one. Hi, I'm Tim. Mike is looking for a job and wants to learn how to use a computer so that he can apply to jobs online. Since he's new to using a computer, he'll need an introduction to the parts of a computer and how to use them. Let's follow along with Mike as he learns about computers. First we'll go over the basics of a computer and its parts. A computer is an electronic device that processes information. With a computer you can create documents like resumes, look up information on the internet, watch movies, play games, and much more. The computer in this picture is called a desktop. A desktop computer is meant to be used in one set location and not to be moved around very much. This computer is a laptop. Whereas the desktop is meant to stay in one place, this kind of computer is easy to set up and use in different locations. Tablets are another type of computer. They can't do everything that a desktop or a laptop can do, but they're very easy to use and are the easiest to transport. Many computers out there are known as a PC, which stands for Personal Computer. The computer on the right is a PC, and it is made by companies like Dell and HP. Another type of computer is a Mac, which stands for Macintosh, and are made by Apple. The Mac is the computer on the left. These two types of computers work a bit differently. For some of the other classes on this site, you'll choose between the Mac and PC for the lesson, but for this topic, they're very similar. A desktop computer has different parts. The computer case is what holds the main parts of the computer that make it work and process the information. The monitor is the part of the computer that shows visual information, such as the text and images. The keyboard and mouse are the ways that you can communicate with the computer and tell it what to do, similar to how a remote control is used to tell your TV what to do. You can learn more about these parts of the computer in the following lessons in this class. As mentioned before, we are going to click continue to move on to activity two. The mouse is one way to communicate with your computer. The mouse is a tool to help you move around and interact with different parts of the computer screen. As you move the mouse around, you'll also move a corresponding pointer that appears on the computer screen. Once you have that pointer on something you want to do or select, you click a button on the mouse to tell the computer to do something. A trackpad or a touchpad is another way to move the pointer and interact with the computer. It's common on laptop computers and tracks the touch of your finger to move the pointer. 
Some touchpads allow you to click on them rather than hitting a button like you do on a mouse. Others have left and right buttons that are similar to those you have on a mouse. In order to use a mouse effectively, it's best to hold the mouse as seen in the picture. Mike places his whole hand on the mouse and places his index finger on the left button and his middle finger on the right button. The rest of his hand rests on the sides of the mouse to help him move the mouse. When you are moving the mouse, remember that you are just sliding the mouse around, not turning it. Let's practice moving the mouse. Using the mouse, move the pointer on the screen so it's over the number 1. Then move it from the number 1 to the number 2, then 3, and 4. Try this for a few seconds until you get comfortable moving the mouse and getting the pointer to a specific spot on the screen. Don't worry, I know this takes some getting used to, but with practice you'll get it. Click. Most of the time, when you want to select something on a computer, you'll move the mouse to get the pointer where you want it, and then press down on the button on the left of the mouse. This is called left clicking. Left click the blue button now. Great job! The button on the right is often used to show a menu of options. Pressing down the right button is called right clicking. To see a sample right click menu, right click on the purple button now. Great job! The pointer of the mouse that appears on the computer screen appears differently based on what the mouse does over certain parts of the screen. The pointer will look like the arrow, labeled normal, when it's just moving around the screen. The normal pointer is also what you'll see when you're on a desktop icon or other similar items you can click on to open. When the pointer is on a link to a website, a button, or other items you can click on, it'll also appear as a hand. The pointer will look like a capital I when it's over text you can click on. When the computer is processing information, the hourglass will appear to tell you to wait. Also, the pointer will appear as an arrow when you're resizing or moving windows something you can learn more about in the Intro to PC or Mac classes on this site. Click the green button when you are ready to move ahead. Drag and drop is another thing you can do with a mouse. To move something from one area of a computer to another, you place your pointer above the item you want to move. Then press down on the left button and don't let go. Keep holding that button while you move the pointer where you want the item to go. Once you have the pointer and the item where you want it, lift your finger to stop holding down the left button. Let's give drag and drop a try. Here you see some documents on a desktop, along with a recycle bin and a folder. For each document that has a green check mark, drag it to put it into the folder. Move the mouse pointer over the document, press down with the left mouse button, and hold. Then drag over to the folder icon and let go of the left button. For each document with a red X, drag them over to the recycle bin. Click the green button when you are ready to move ahead. Great job! Now try clicking on the Explorer icon to open a browser. It's the blue Great E job. on the desktop. One way to get more practice with the mouse is to play the game Solitaire on your computer. PCs come with this game because it's so helpful for learning to move the mouse, clicking, dragging, and dropping. On Windows computers, you can find Solitaire by going to Programs, then Games, and you'll see it listed there. Go ahead and click continue again to proceed to activity 3. The keyboard is one of the main ways to communicate with the computer. 
Mike will be using the keyboard to type in a lot of the information to create his resume. There are sections of keys on the keyboard. This area is the main portion of the keyboard and includes the keys you'll use most often, such as the letter keys, the space bar, and more. We'll go over some of the specific keys later in this class. This section has the directional keys, which help you move through a document and website with the arrows. The number keys are located in two places on the keyboard. They are in the main section above the letters, and on larger keyboards in a number pad on the right side. This area of keys can be either arrow keys or number keys, depending on whether the number lock key is on or off. At the top of the keyboard are the function keys and special keys, which have specific uses. See the keys outlined in orange? Click them with your mouse pointer to find out more about what each one does. Click the green button when you are ready to move ahead. Here's a few more. Let's practice using a keyboard and help Mike to fill out some parts of his job application. First we'll type in Mike's first name in the box that says type first name here. Use the keyboard to type in Mike when you're done, click on Next. Great! Now type in Mike's last name in the box that says Type Last Name Here. Mike's last name is Harris. Use the keyboard to type in Harris. When you are done, click on Next. Good job! Now type in Mike's phone number in the box that says Type Phone Number Here. Use the keyboard to type in 202-8675309, then click on Next. Nice work! You've just helped Mike get started on his online job application using the keyboard to type in information. This last activity will show you the different ports of a computer and their function. Things you use with a computer, such as a mouse or headphones, connect to the computer by plugging them into openings called ports. These ports are often found on the back of a computer case for desktop computers and around the sides on laptops. Two of the most common types of ports you'll find yourself using are the USB, seen on the left, and the headphone jack, seen on the right. The USB port is common for things like a mouse, webcam, and smartphone. It's also used for a storage device called a USB drive. These drives, as seen in the picture above, are a great way to save your work if you're going to use a public or shared computer. They can be plugged into the USB drive of a computer, and then you can save documents, images, and other things to them. Once you're done working, you can just take the drive with you, and you'll have all your work. USB drives are also called flash drives and thumb drives. Headphones often use a USB port, or sometimes they use an audio jack. You may find that there are ports on your computer that you don't recognize. In that case, you can consult the manual that came with your computer, or ask for help at your public computer center or library. At the end of the lesson, you will receive a certificate of completion and you will have the option to download it or review the courses you learned. Here are a couple websites you can access to practice typing and using the mouse. I will also provide these links and an activity sheet in the comments below. You can also type these websites in the search bar of your internet browser.